to store. The federal government allows so many parts per billion of dead rats, dead pigeons. Brenda's on her way, we're going to load the wood. All the chicken manure that's in these silos, where the farmer stores it, okay, they load it from the, from the farm to a big place in Chicago, American Maze. That's easy. It all collects the insects, bugs, and just take the corn droppings from it. animals. Yeah. Could be dead raccoons in it. That's why you get a Social machine, the grinding the corn up, with all, all the animals, the bones, the toenails, the teeth, and everything. And they make corn flakes out of it. Believe it or not, that's true. Yeah. That's, As you that's can see, this stuff actually this one's hard doesn't one's have any of that. Yeah. This is all clean. This is just harvested. Is that ball. working good for you? Yeah, doing it like that. And that was better. Yeah. I don't know if I want to eat corn for it. Yeah, I won't yeah. oh, yeah. Corn flakes don't use. even any resemble anything of what we're doing. Oh. Huh? Corn flakes don't even resemble what yeah. we're doing. Oh. But if, if you could go back by the time it's processed and everything, the corn flakes you ate probably don't resemble much of corn. I know it's all residue too. Like you said, they take the germ out. The certain things they they don't pass through the yeah. the deep red ones are pretty easy once you get them started. Yeah, some of them are, yeah. Good thing you guys don't work for cow hogs. For Kellogg's? Yeah. Ow. Well, we'd be charging you if we did. Shop me that. I don't know. They're losing too much product. Right? <laughs> it ain't lost yet. We'll oh, sweep it up. Put it in. Fix it up. Just like they do. Oh, yeah. The dirt and that one. Yeah. Good for you. That's, uh... No. They're, they're far less sweat. Uh, rubbage. Or what do they call that? Rubbage. Rubbage. There rubbage. you go. Yeah. Isn't it? Yep. 
for the white man. The God. true savage is the here's white the, man. Here's the true savage white man yeah. <laughs> selling corn. <laughs> Thank God for the lessons that the Indian gave our forefathers, huh? What? Thank God that the that the uh, the knowledge was passed on. Right. How did we become like in America? Like, how did we become friends with the Indians and then hated the Indians? Well, at the beginning, they were pretty innocent settlers, and they were at the mercy of the Indians because the Indians had the means of feeding themselves and white man at first. Yeah, at first. they they really didn't understand how these survived. They brought their own provisions over on the boat. But when they, they ran, ran out, out yeah. they were starving. And back then, the Indians could trust the white man because there was no animosity between them. That didn't happen until after man started to... They started to create certain governments. And as time went on, the governments become a little more corrupt in their thinking. And they took advantage of the Indians. They took their land. And... They what, gave them. Hey boys, what they gave them the treaties they had to live by. Can I cheat? Yeah. Go ahead. Here, hey, heck yeah. Go ahead, cheat. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, that cut his hand off. Well, I got to watch your fingers. Watch your fingers there, Jake. They'll cut away from you. There you go. That ain't sharp. It's the water opener. You see? Right. It ain't enough. So it's good practice. Treat it like it is then. If you want to smell something good, oh. that's good for you. You give him a letter over there. You want to like what? I sat down there at the farmer's market. I talked to the young man that was in an American currency. Yeah. Paper. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Something to do with that. Rub it on the seat. Pretty good with that. Rub it on the Who's in American currency? Like trading currency? Federal Reserve notes? The trade Federal Reserve notes? Yeah. It's under the table, right? Yeah. Yeah. All forms of paperwork. Right? But if you trade it with, like, uh, euros or what? No, 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 no. It was just, it was just uh, currency that they made for military and uh, various different agencies like that. He had a pretty good experience. I so went home and got some campaign for Liberty, the Liberty Dollars. Oh. Yeah. Did you sell some of them? Oh. I don't know if it's there. I just wanted to show it to him. He won't see anything. I've never seen anything like that. I just bought last night a $25 half pound tea. It says John Paul 2012 and it has the White House behind it. I think you see something on the or uh, yeah. yeah. I wanted to see if Ty had some of those so I know he'd probably get them kinda of cheaper than what I could. It was kinda of expensive, but I wanted one at least one of them just to, just to have. Was it silver? Yeah. Oh. Just cause oh, it was only a half ounce though and I had to pay twenty five bucks for it. But it's a commemorative, you know, and sometimes those things are worth money. So just like that, uh North Fed Ron Paul Dollar in 2008. After I bought it for 20 bucks, and then after the Fed raided the Liberty Dollar uh, that night, those coins went up to 300 dollars a piece. Ain't too good. One out corner. One out for silver. One, that one gold. Coin. I sold one for uh, like almost 300 bucks. And I bought it for 20. Yeah. yeah, and then you, you were... more silver? That's what you should have done, was hurt. I didn't have sold. enough, and then, you know, by that time, everybody was getting a pretty penny for them by the time. I bought dollars or something. But I wish I had bought a bunch of money. Is this the one? Is this painted on me? Some does, some don't. Huh. Better than using the bomb. Except what if we got the pop on it? It's all over. If we ever do this again, we'll not.
not be killing this by hand. Right. I can assure you that. Yeah. I had a chance to buy a shelter. I got a few this bricks because I'm my hand. Right. Right. Yeah. What's that there you got, Dean? Well, that's going to be like one of them out there, but I'm going to hook that up to a shelter. Yeah. Let me point to it and you point it out. Tell me what it's about, Dean. Well, what you got there? These belts are in the way, but. I'll get over it. This engine here happens to be like somewhere around 1923 to 27. It's a McCormick Daring, one and a half horsepower. It's called a firewheel engine. It's throttle governed, and they use these at the uh, turn century. And they use it for pumping water, uh, grinding grain. Uh, one of the small blacksmith shops, there's a, a multitude of, of uses for these engines. This particular engine, I've had it bored. It's got a new cylinder in it, new wrist pin, crankshaft recondition. And now to cool them type of engines, you said they just pour water in the top there? Yes, this engine happens to have right here what they call a hopper. Right. And it's actually a water cool. A lot of people thought these were steam engines because when they got hot they would steam, as you will see when we start this other engine now. Right. Okay. But they use these for multitudes of, of use. Back. Huh. And it saves a farmer, just like what we're doing here, they, this machine ran shellers that could shell probably 50 bushels of corn in less than three hours, where by hand, Mechanically, it would probably take a man all day, so it cut down labor costs. Right, right. And they determined that these engines could run uh, a, a, like a day on a gallon of fuel, but what it could make in three hours' time versus a man's labor for a day's worth of work, they made back then several several dollars an hour. Right, right. And they saved the farmer that time that they could be doing something else on the farm. Right, right. But they're, they're pretty interesting, and huh. they're awful lot of fun. And these engines basically are considered 100-year 100 100 year engines. This is last 100 like, years? Yeah, this is like 1923. Right. And I've, I've got one. What's the year on the one outside when we go out there? That's early 20s, too. Early 20s? Yeah. Okay, go. This engine here. This engine here is, is a Fairbanks Morse. Same thing. It's a throttle govern engine. They they start them on kerosene, or they start them on gas, excuse me. And after it warms up, they convert them on the gas up to kerosene from gas to kerosene. And they had what they call a fuel mixer. It's not a carburetor. It's a fuel mixer. Right. And uh, they would start them on gas, run them on kerosene, because kerosene was uh, so many pennies a gallon cheaper. And after you got them hot, they had what they call water injection. You'd open this injector. It would be injected into the fuel, into the cylinder head. And they actually had water injection. This engine right here is a 1916. 1916. And then again, you put the water in here, and that's where it would uh, keep the engine cool. Right. right. That, that's sit there and boil or something. Yeah, and as the water would evaporate and boil away, boil away they, would, that heat. they would take a young kid that would go over to another engine, maybe running a, a, a piston pump. They get the water and they keep these hoppers full to keep the engines cool, huh. and they can run these things all day long on a, on a gallon or two of fuel. Uh, and that's what we're about to do with this corn here is we're going to take it out to a machine kind of like that, and we're going to run it through a mill and kind of pan over here. Right. And then unfortunately, what we're doing? Unfortunately, we're shelling this by hand. Right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and turn this off now, and we'll finish it, and then we'll turn it back on when we get out there and start uh, 